she would have let them just grow. All right, we are going to go over the homework just like yesterday. If you have any questions, please let me know, but I'm not gonna just go over all of them. So 21 was one, 22, two, 23, two, 24, three, 25, four, 26, three, 27, three, 28, four, 29, four, 32, 31, one, 32, three, 34, four, 34 and 35 were one. You skipped 36 and 37. Then we have 38 was two, 39 was two, and 40 was three. Why don't you take a minute to check to see like why you got some wrong. See if there's any you want me to explain. It's a lem it's a lemon hand sanitizer slash lotion. Did anybody find any? 40. At which location is the temperature of the ocean floor or bedrock most likely the highest? So this is not quite a straightforward. I actually never talked about the temperature of the ocean floor or anything like that. So let's go around and look at these letters. So number one, or I'm sorry, answer one, which is letter A, shoot, gotta find a reference, there we go, is near South America on the Scotia plate. So let's go take a look. It's right here. It's on a transform plate boundary. So just keep that in mind. Uh, B is in the middle of a plate, so it's not near an edge. C is at the mid-ocean ridge. Guys, what's happening at a mid-ocean ridge? It's a divergent plate boundary, so the plates are spreading apart. And when those plates spread apart, if you were able to look down, what would you see? Molten lava. So what do you think the temperature is there? Very high. It's molten lava. This, where was the transform plate? That was, they were just scooting by each other. So there's no molten lava there. The middle of the plate doesn't have any molten lava. And D again is on a plate. There's no boundary there. So the molten lava is going to be the hottest place. Um, so that is right on C, which is answer three. But again, that wasn't just a straight black and white answer. You had to think about, okay, what does it mean? if the plates pull apart and you look down. Are there any more I should go over? No, okay, then I guess we're back to our packet. Keep this around guys, but I'm not giving you any homework tonight, okay? It was brought to my attention that I gave you 20 whole questions two days in a row, so you get a break today. Tomorrow's Friday, you might get a break tomorrow too. So. Tomorrow is Friday. So grab your packet. We were jumping around the packet a little bit. Let's see where we should go today. Um, does anybody have it open to page 28 where we were yesterday? We did finish that whole page, right? All right, so jumping again, we're going to 14. I know that's a weird page, but we're going to page 14. It is, it is 14 pages ahead of where we were yesterday. I should have just let out or behind, I'm sorry, you're right. I should have just rearranged the packet, but then I would have had to, it would have all been messed. We didn't do all of it, did we? Oh, we did, that's because I decided with your class. So let's just go look at it, perfect. I'm sorry, so my other classes have not done that. You are special. So we already learned, 
the two different models of the solar system. So we should have learned solar system before we talked about the models of the solar system. That would have made more sense. Um, so remember the geocentric is when they said geo stands for Earth is the center and the planets go around Earth. And then helio, what does helio stand for? Sun and the planets go around the sun. Hey, by the way, which one's correct? Helio with the sun in the center. All right, so I'm sorry. Let's keep jumping around the packet. I want to go back then to page. It's another weird one. It's not in order at all. Nope. You silly goose. Oh no, not I'm lost. Oh, page 15. Oh, we are just going to page 15. The next page. I'm sorry, no jumping. That was not a jump, just page 15. I'm like, I can't find the page. That's because it was the next page. So we are going to be talking about the shapes of an orbit. Oh. Wait, so first of all, do you guys know what an orbit is? Something going around something which is actually supposed to that thing. Yes and no a little bit. You've got the idea. I would give you a 100. Yes. Or I would give you a 95. Darn it. Yes. My arm. There we go. So the orbit, you guys know the difference between nouns and verbs? Mm -hmm. Nouns are like a person, place, or thing. A verb is an action word. An orbit is a noun. It is the path the planet takes to go around the uh, object is going around versus revolution. That's the verb. That's the act of going around. So they're kind of interchangeable words, but if you're being technical, there is a difference. So um, as I take you, I know you guys wanted me to plug this in. Let me just plug this in just to show you it's not as exciting as one might think. No, it's really not. And I'm pretty sure this thing is from like 1954. So every time I go to plug it in, I cross my fingers. I don't get electrocuted. <laughs> Jake, can you come plug this in for me? <laughs> That's all it does. That's it. <laughs> no, well, I mean, it moves, but like I. Lights off. Uh, okay. <laughs> It's eclipse time. There is, no, sit out. No, you have been talked to about this before. So no, this thing is not as exciting as one might think. It looks like you it. do have to move it manually. Um, um, so anyway, when I move this around, let's take a look at the Earth going around the sun. What shape does that look like is Circle. going around? Black hole. Life is Circle. rough sometimes. Yes, this looks like a circle. But officially, the word is not oval. No, oblate spheroid is when you take a circle and squish it. Or a sphere, a sphere and squish it. That's the shape of the Earth. The Earth orbit is slightly elliptical. Oval. Which just means oval. Go sit down, Anthony, to your seat. I know, but you got to write your notes and you didn't bring your packet. You go sit back there. So it says the shape of the Earth's orbit is slightly elliptical. That's a fancy word for oval. With the sun at one foci. Any part of it? Did somebody just, just say huh? What was huh about it? Foci. So let's talk about what a foci is. Let me actually, okay, sorry. So if I was able, which I'm not able to draw a perfect circle because I'm not that good. You're not here. So let's pretend that's a perfect circle. It's not. <laughs> Work with me, Riley. So where would, there's one center of a perfect circle, right? You guys know. <laughs> My desk is being taken Let's away. You know that on a perfect circle, this length, what's the name of that thing? The That's the radius. You know that that radius the same is the same as that radius, is the same as this one. And again, this is not a perfect circle, but you're pretending. 
So you know that those are all the same in a perfect circle. But if we put an oval, is there a radius of the same everywhere? No. So if you put a dot here as the center of the oval, this one is different than that one, which is still different than that one. You know that, right? So ovals don't have one center. They have two. And they're called foci. Mathematically, someone, not me, someone knows how to figure that out. So I don't know how to figure out exactly where the circle, where they are. You don't need to. The foci are just the centers of the circle. You need to take my word for it that it all mathematically works out. Now, with this earth going around the sun, one of these centers is the sun. The other one's an imaginary dot in space. I don't know um, No. Because that's not how seasons are figured yeah, out. Yeah, sun's up at all times. No, Sorry. no, but don't get ahead of yourself. It's not up at all times, but like it's, it, it occurs in all the seasons. It, it, it does. Itself. And when I don't want, Anthony, I don't want you to get ahead of yourself. I haven't taught you that concept yet, and clearly no one has. So don't, don't get down on yourself, Anthony. You'll figure it out. But anyway, so a foci is one of the centers of a circle, of an oval. By the way, two of them. Or is it the other way around? A focus is one and a foci. Okay. Or... My sister has a focus. Okay, so a foci is one. If there's two of them, they're called focus. My mistake. So the sun is just at one of them. There's some math we're going to do with this. And it's not that bad. I will help you out with it. Um, so that's what a foci is. It's one of the centers. So eccentricity is the next vocab word. I'm not sure why that Y got stuck there underneath the word eccentricity. Might wanna correct that. The eccentricity is officially defined as how out of round an orbit is. No. Where's your math homework? How do you know I was going to get in there? I promise you. Where is your math homework? Did he tell you straight up I was going to give him my math homework? Mm -hmm. God, he's an idiot. Yes, he is. What do you think? Who do you think? Yes. Here's homework 147. Last night. Put it on your desk or in your folder. Put your folder down. Now you may go to the bathroom. Guys, that phrase, how out of round? What the freaking heck does that mean? How out of round? To me, you, how, say it again. I like your answer. Not how it's not going around. What do you, what do you, how it's not round. It's how not round something is. And I think it's the stupidest phrase in the world. I've said this before. Sometimes they just say things to sound smart. This sounds like something like the queen of England might say while drinking her tea with her pinky up. How out of round is it? How out of round just means how oval is it? Today we're going to have to use our half earth because I'm not sure where, I think I finally got rid of my giant. You guys see this earth looks pretty round, right? Yeah. Right, how out of round means how That's much crazy. has that old roundness been squished into an oval? So that's what eccentricity means. How ovally is it? And with eccentricity, there's a formula. And in earth science, what do we know about math and formulas in earth science? Not math class. This might be true. This is one of those times. But um, what do you say, Carlos? It's on the reference table. You do not have to memorize formulas. So everybody grab your reference tables. Find the formula for eccentricity. Oh, 
Where might we find formulas? Front page of your reference table. Middle left. Formula for eccentricity is distance between the two foci divided by the length of the major axis. Remember, that's, that's the shape of an orbit. It's an ellipse. You have this exact thing in your notes. Distance between two foci. So remember, foci are the centers of the, third, of the oval. They will be labeled. So I need you to find the distance between the two of them. Now, this is science. What side of the ruler should you be using? The centimeter side. So it does not say CM, it says MM, that stands for metric measurement. Some of them say CM. So you need to measure and you need to measure to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. No, it's not five, it can't be five. If I just told you, you have to measure to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. Let me try this again. Give me a little louder this time. Let me try this again. Listen. Wait. It I don't understand what you're going with. That's because you're not listening. So it can't be five. And here's the reason it can't be five. I said it has to be to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. Now that doesn't mean, oh, so you, you, she means 5.1. It means 5.0. Guys, if the Regents says measure to the nearest 10, and even if that number is zero and you just leave it blank, because again, you're not an idiot, you know that five and 5.0 are the same number. But if they say round to the nearest 10, you darn well better do exactly what they say. Now, some of you may be measuring this at 5.1 or 5.2. Um, uh, clearly when I measured it, I also got five zero. Do what you got, as long as you're close, I'd say within a couple, maybe 0.1 or 0.2. Now, major axis. What's, let's first start with what's an axis. An axis cuts whatever you're doing in half. So there are multiple axes. I have this one. There is also this would be an axis, or this could be an axis. But or actually, that one cannot be because that's not perfectly half. So there's two axes, basically the up and down one and the side to side. We want the longest one because it's the major axis. So you go from one edge of the oval all the way to the other edge of the oval. Basically the equator of the oval. Again, 
Make sure you're measuring to the nearest tenth. I also, I believe, had 10 points. Oh, I had 10.3. <laughs> so again, use whatever you had. Then we plug it into the formula, which you guys just wrote down. Which number goes on top? The distance between the two foci. So that's the 5.2. Or I'm the 5.0 for me. So eccentricity equals the point uh, 5.0. For me, I got 10.3. Guys, I have a smaller number on top of a bigger number. And I'm dividing. Right, it doesn't matter. Plug what you have written down into your calculator and you get should be a decimal. Anytime you have a bigger, no, a small number on top and a bigger number on bottom, it's always going to be a decimal. I got, actually, did somebody use these exact numbers? All right, so let me do the math with those exact numbers. Yeah, but I wanted to show the whole thing. Point four eight five four three six eight nine. I'm gonna tell you for this one, they will always say round to the nearest thousand. That's three, that's three. That's three. In case you're ever wondering how many decimals it is, the easy way to figure it out is 10. So for tenths, 10 has one zero, so it's one place. Hundreds, hundred has two zeros, so you would have two decimal, two numbers after the decimal. Thousand is three numbers after the decimal. So for me, I come here to the five. Your numbers might be different. Do I keep the five or do I round it to a six? Keep it. So this is 0.485. If I had wrote 0.486. I get the whole question wrong. And for all of you who did use, like you use 5.2, right? Or 10.2, I'm sorry. Is that, what did you use differently? Oh, you did, did but did you have 5.2? No. Some you use different numbers, right? I used 5.2, I didn't put anything in the calculator. <laughs> what numbers did you use, Renee? Okay, and did you get a slightly different answer? Yeah. Uh, do you happen to have the whole thing still in your calculator? Uh, hold on. Yeah, it's going to be a while. Okay. 4901. That's good enough right there. So that's a really long number. Notice it's a different number than mine. This is why I hate correcting this. She literally used one slightly different number. I have to use whatever numbers you had and put them in the calculator and see if you rounded them correctly. I hate correcting this one. I always hope Mr. Mega gets this one. Um, and so by the way, how would this round? So we go three numbers out. Does it stay the same or round up? Stays the same. Yeah, Kai? Wait, four, one, five, three, eight. Thank you. So thanks, Kai. Perfect example. So guys, how does this one round if I say to the nearest thousand? Well, actually, does it the one round up or stay the same? Round up. If Kai had just left it like that, I'd have to mark the whole thing wrong. So please round carefully. Anyway. A little bit more that we need in the notes. So what does this number mean? This number tells us how oval the shape is. But does that number mean anything to you and tell you how oval it is? Nope. So here's what you need to know. A perfect circle. So actually, let's. I want you guys to try and figure out. Here's my perfect circle. Let's do the eccentricity, the distance between the two foci. Are there any foci? There's only one center. So what's the distance between them? Zero. So the distance between the two foci is zero. 
It doesn't matter what the uh, diameter is. Zero divided by anything is zero. zero. So what's the eccentricity of a perfect circle? Zero. zero. Now, when my oval gets more ovally, the foci spread apart. It could spread apart so much that it's a straight line oval. What happens if I keep squishing an oval? Becomes a line. Then my distance to my foci is equal to my length of my major axis. What does that mean? The more oval the ellipse, the more eccentric it is. So the bigger that number, the more eccentric it can be. And that's where we're going to stop. No homework. Leave your rulers, please, on your desk so I don't have to pass them out again.